Fox's Belgium. <laughs> well, if you didn't give me, give me good morning yet, shame on you, because it is really, really early where I come from. So I'm here, ready to talk to you guys and tell you all about application modernization. And I'm going to tell you about how you can do that with low to zero code changes, still adopting cloud native architecture, event driven solutions, microservices, and all the hype words you all love to hear. Jokes apart, let me start giving you this gift. Once upon a time, an architect left a project and he said, Dear new developer, please accept this gift. He didn't tell though what it was. It is the best we could do with the technology we had back then and the time we were given. You know how it goes. Enjoy. Previous architect. So you will find yourself, either you are a senior developer or an architect or even the developer, like this. Your first reaction, you're going to look at that huge monolith and you say, mm, OK, I'm going to try to coexist with it. I'm just going to create all my new stuff using all the hype technologies I saw at Divox Belgium. And I'm not going to change it. Because, well, you know how project, project managers like to do it. If it is working, don't. Right? But this is what ends up happening when you try to coexist with it. You actually can't add any more weight to the work you've been doing because it's already too much. Sustaining a legacy is hard, as we know, most of us at least. Well, at least from my past 10 years with Java, almost every customer I've been to around the globe was dealing with problems in legacy software, legacy systems, plus they still had to sustain it. So you come here, you come, and then you return home to your jobs with all the new fun stuff you saw about serverless Java, Kotlin, whatever, and you cannot use it. So you think, all right, all right, I know, 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 I know what I'm going to do. I am going to modernize it. Microservices, even driven architecture. I'm going to go to the cloud. Um, but wait, when you actually look at it, you will end up seeing yourself doing something like this. And trust me, so... I work at Red Hat, we love open source, and I have seen some similar stuff happening to projects in our own company. Open source projects with more than 10 years running on big enterprises around the globe, banks, healthcare. Well, it, we did the best we could with what we had back then, right? But is it still good for today's technology and today's needs? It's not all about technologies, my friend. Remember, we are all here just because we are addressing business needs. If you forgot you were here because you need to learn how to address business needs, well, let me remind you. You don't have a job if you're not addressing business needs. Even if your business need is to fix a problem in your technology company that is then going to fix a business need. So yeah, that's kind of how we go, all right? So once we go that way, we start to look at the world outside. Is it that hard for everyone to modernize? So why and how they do it? How they go down this modernization path? Oh, what? Just because I'm whispering, then you have to do it as well. Let me hear. Are you paying attention? Yes. No, still not good enough. 
You want to see some code? What is it? Mm? OK. So since you're not excited enough, I'm still not going to show you code. That's what you get. It was your choice. So this is what we have. This is uh, an actual survey done with the conveyor community. And we have, on one side, ways company actually want to how they s what they think is modernization. What is it really modernization? Is it just putting stuff on containers? Pow! Pack the big elephant, put it on containers. We also have the need to automate and reduce operations, also known as the good DevOps culture result. So yeah, when you adopt DevOps, and everything that comes with it, that's where you get. But can you really do DevOps without the modern technologies these days? It's, it gets harder, right? And all those other stuff. On the other side, cost, if you thought cost was the top one reason to modernize, well, let me tell you, it's not. Sometimes when you modernize an application, you will get higher costs. Sometimes you don't even know how much it's going to cost. Can you tell me how much you're going to spend on your next pass, on your next SaaS? Well, it's hard to, hard to calculate, right, to estimate. So with that, I'm going to tell you that, well, if you find yourself with one of these needs, you might be in a scenario where you want to modernize, otherwise you wouldn't even be here listening to me, right? And other than that, I will share some common challenges during a, a legacy stack modernization. Karina, are you going to show me the secret to solve all my problems? No, I'm sorry to tell you that. But I'm going to share a secret that can solve several problems, and that can save you time, and that can save your team's time because you know we have so we have unlimited number of people to do all that stuff that we left on the backlog, right? Address all that those um, topics. So because of that, we are going to discuss some challenges, and I'm going to show you not only the challenges. I'm not going to tell you how to solve it. I'm going to show you how I solve it using an enterprise architectural solution using open source software. Hashtag I love open source. And many other on the, the audience does as well, I know. Uh, and I, yeah, all of that. It's going to be very cool, so stay with me. I hope that the next time I ask, you engage. Otherwise, no code for you. I'm just kidding. I'm going to show you anyway. So many times I've, I've seen myself in customers where they said, mm, I'm sorry, Karina, this is really, really a problem to me, but I don't have the code to give you. So what do I do, Mr. Customer? Mm -hmm. That's one of the problems. N not every time we have access to the code that we want to change, right? Sometimes even if we have, they had that same statement I shared in the beginning. If it, work if it works, don't touch it. Please, Mr. Developer and Architect. We don't have the money or the time or the people to do that. So, uh, yeah. Another thing that we might see is you might even think, well, OK, I'm going to leave that um, legacy stuff there, and I'm going to use all the new stuff I learned. I'm going to create a new solution around this existing legacy architecture. But. What if you are dealing, let's start talking about a use case. So when I start talking about the code, you will already be used to it. Let's say you are working, working on a store, a retail store, and you are the consultant there. The legacy system, you cannot change the code of the legacy system, but they want two new functionalities. Uh, what are you going to do, magic? Cloud, Mr. Customer, pay me, give me money, give me money, cloud, cloud, cloud. So that's not how it goes. Most of the times, if we want to extend existing applications, we will have to integrate existing software data, data that is there for many years, customer information, with the new technologies we're going to put in this architecture. 
Otherwise, it's useless. It's just code that, you, that we have put out there. Other than that, what is worth it, a code? Bear with me. <laughs> what is it worth if I have a code, a data, sorry, that is different in my two databases? I just inserted something, I saved something, I updated Otavio Santana's to Otavio Santana, but then when I went to query his name, it was still outdated. What's going on? Actually, it stayed outdated for five minutes, and there he is, waiting for it to get up. To Can't, no, unconceivable for people like us. Like us, because if you are like me, we like resilient and consistent software. We don't want any of those eventual consistency problems. We don't want to handle them, no. We want to address them before it happens. Mm, nice. And cloud, cloud, cloud. Let's just repeat this word, it's so beautiful. Mm, that's not as how it goes as well. We have seen people talking about cloud the whole event. So what does it really mean to go to the cloud? Does it mean I'm going to rewrite just a part of my software and then use uh, software as a service to solve that? Or am I going to use just uh, Kafka as a service or function as a service? I don't know. That's all options. You can even just decide to use Yes. That's still moving to the cloud. You're still automating your processes, as you're going to see. So let's go. How can I finally, Karina, please stop talking? How can I modernize? by augmenting and extending with flow to zero impact on the legacy stack. Augmenting and extending. Augmenting and extending. Why am I saying this? Because there are many ways we can modernize a monolith. That huge elephant flowing in the sky, it can be modernized in many ways. You can either say, nah, I don't care about it. Let's delete and start all over again. I have all the time and the money in the world. Or you can just reuse some parts of it, as we have done in the project that I told you about. We had, we have still this software running in many customers around the globe. Do I really want to just leave them back? Like leave them behind and I'm, I have a new future now, Mr. Customer, I'm sorry. I don't want to deal with your legacy problems anymore. That's not what happened. We took the best out of it, and then we put it into modern technologies, into modern architecture, and then we could deliver the best of it. And then, as customers feel comfortable, as they feel it's time, they can come to. So we also can uh, lift and shift. If you need a, a quick start, you just need to go. You, you need some type of improvement right now, for yesterday. You can just grab whatever you have, put it into a better platform, as is, lift and shift, as is, software as is, lift and shift, software as is. Yes, why am I saying this? Because you can get performance improvements, you can get processes improvement, your, de your development cycle can go faster if you simply add some CI CD, some containers, right? So you can release software faster. You can fix bugs faster. There are many advantages, advantages to this. Does it mean it's the best scenario ever? Maybe not. But it can help you mitigate a problem. So what happens here is, oh, my arrow is on the wrong place. Because I'm not going to talk about lift and shift. I wanted to know if you were paying attention. Ah, that joke, it sucks, I know. I also hate it. So, yeah. Actually, we're going to talk about refactor and augment. We are going to talk about how we can just take smaller pieces of your code, capabilities, refactor, creating better software that suits better a modern cloud environment, because if we start to talk about what is cloud native here, oh boy, you can sit with me until the, yeah, because there's no definition for what is cloud native. But one thing we know, 
there's, I mean, there is no well-established agreement across all the vendors on what is cloud native architecture, cloud native application. But one thing we know, if I say that an application runs as a cloud native solution, or you can bet it will leverage the best of the place it is getting deployed on. So if I say it's going to get deployed on Kubernetes, my Java application should expose the health checks. My Java application should be able to expose the configuration so I can configure them via, via environment variables. My application should expose APIs, should be able to be controlled by the whole environment, Kubernetes. So there's a lot of stuff around it, if you want to know more. Follow me on Twitter, we can discuss it. But for today, what we will see is that not only by changing the application, because you have already learned a lot about it, let's talk about architecture, not only about changing the application itself, you can achieve a scenario where you can improve your application. But by changing the whole architecture, you will create an environment that is suitable for that. So this is real quick. All right, story. Well, I have here Alex Tizon, he's the CEO, and he told Mario Fusco, who is my architect. Mario, Mario, this is what I want. <laughs> uh, we are leading this retail store. We are the leading retail store for a while, but now things are start starting to go down because, you know, technology. So my biggest challenge is to be like equal with my competitors, my high-tech competitors. We see that happening a lot on the fintech world. Hmm? Then I have the CTO. Who's my CTO? Alina. Aww. So <laughs> Alina, my CTO, she comes to, to Mario, and she says, well, you know what, Mario? I'm an expert, and I do know that for this company, the first thing we should do is develop a new cashback system. Cashback, it's on a hype. We need a new cashback system. Whenever a customer buys something, we need it credited there on the cashback for them to use it later. Another thing, I want a better search. It's too slow today. So we end up with these three needs. We need a new cashback functionality to the store. We need a full text search capability and we want to use all the stuff we learned at Devox. So, already using stuff we learned at Devox. Do you know what this is? This is the most outer view of the architecture represented using the C4 model. Hmm. If you were not on the talk, hmm. search it. If you were just draw, drawing boxes and dragging and dropping, hmm. let's talk. Look, let, let's talk after the talk. So, this is represent, uh, represented with the C4 model. And what do I have here? I have the people that interact with my legacy application. I have the database, pretty common, legacy. It looks simple, looks like the shiny gift, but it's actually the huge, the huge ele elephant. So when you think, uh, before that, if you look at this and then you start to think, OK, 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 I'm going to do that. Ah, cashback functionality, I know. I'm going to use a microservices because Karina told me to augment and extend. So I'll leave it there, and I'll grab a microservices, a microservice, and I will connect it to this database. Uh, you're going to connect your new microservice to the same database. Mm, might not work. Remember, data needs to be synchronized across legacy and modern. So you are there going and adopting a beautiful auntie pattern. And that's what you want to run away from. So this is an anti pattern for data access in distributed architectures where you have multiple systems changing data in a single data store. Don't do that. Another thing, you might think, well, OK, I know, I know. So I'm going to get this service instead of, of changing stuff in many databases, I'm going to get the service and make it change every database that I need, all my microservices. Mm, do a right anti-pattern knocking on your door. Be aware, if you do this, 
you might end up with terrible data, inconsistency. What if one of these doesn't get updated when it should have? Mm. So, these are just two examples, simple examples. That's why I told you I wouldn't give you all the answers. But here you can already see some. So, all right, we understand we already have a simple monolith and a database. What are we going to end up with? Again, this is the C4 model. We are doing like a Google Maps. We are way outside, then we are start to go inside and see what about the technology. We will have the developer, like technical expert, Mario is just there maintaining the legacy. Then he has his developer, Dani, no, Edu. Dani is not here today. Eduardo is there fixing bugs, bugs and also developing new feature for the new software. So the legacy is still here, it's database still here, and I have here the new solutions, okay? How does that work in the end of the day? How can I get to do everything I've been telling you so far? With zero impact. I've been promising you that. I promise I'm gonna show. So we are gonna start with Debezium. So Debezium, what is Debezium? It is a technology that allows you to plug into the database, listen to everything that's going on, and emit events to a Kafka broker so that then you can do whatever you want with these events. Karina, how do I know what's going on in the database? Well, you're going to get, is it a create? Is it an update? Is it a delete? I'm going to show you that. And then, based on that, you don't have to change your code. Eh, the applications that are dealing there, okay, they can stay there. All you're going to do is put an adapter on your database, stream every change as an event. What a beautiful thing, right? So we add Debezium. We put Kafka on this architecture to, of course, receive the events. Every table gets a topic. So then you can know where the changes are happening. And you add your nice microservice there in the end. Remember that Alina asked for a search. So instead of creating something myself, because I am really bad at front end, you're going to see my front end. Oh my god. At least the architectures are good, I think. And it's well diagrammed. So the thing is, search index, OK? So I can add everything that I had, put it into Elasticsearch using event-driven architecture. Because Debezium is going to listen, it's going to say, Kafka, there's a change. And then my service is going to see, oh, there's a change that I need to put on, on Elastic. OK, and then it's going to put it on Elastic Index. And then I can just expose it. It can get better. But let me just remind you. Quarkus is lovely, especially if you're doing it. It's pretty simple. You just add a couple of uh, annotations on your code. You're going to be able to connect to your Kafka topics. You're going to be able to not only that, but also process them using Kafka streams. OK, very nice. Karina, how do you connect to Kafka? Uh, adding properties. Mm. Sounds like you're just Set, trying to sell me stuff. Uh, e <laughs> Camo. More than 340 components to connect stuff. It's an integration framework. I'm just talking about open source. If I'm talking about stuff you didn't hear before, you can just take a screenshot, take note, let's talk about it after. What matters here is that I show you how it all works in the end, okay? So I'm, gonna, I'm using on my microservice I'm using Quarkus as the runtime. I'm using Camo for integration. In the end of the day, it allows me to easily integrate to Kafka, REST, whatever. And when I put them together, wow, wow, pew, 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 fireworks. So yeah, let's see this in action. Enough of the talking. Let me test you. Are you still paying attention to me? Yeah. Ah. Perfect, thank you. So let's see code. 
Let me put this here. Otherwise, guys, I'm just bored. I'm going to give this talk like this, and then you will know what is good for you. Huh? So yeah, you need, to, you need to stay here with me. Perfect. What am I going to do here now? I'm going to show you what I have. And I have a pretty nice OpenShift, which is, uh, let's say, Kubernetes on steroids. It's my container orchestrator that where I have several things running here. I think it's easier if I just do this. I'm gonna skip this tour. I'm gonna give in them I'm gonna give them the tour. Don't need to give them the tour open shift. You will see that I have many pods running there. If it decides to collaborate. Let me refresh the page. I don't know if it's still logged in. So you're going to see that I have several pods deployed. Amongst these pods, I am simulating my legacy environment just because it's easy to reproduce the demo. And in the end, you're going to thank me for this part. It's easy to reproduce everything I am showing you here. So you're going to see that. So look at all these pods that, I'm, that I have running in here. Some of these pods are representing the legacy, the legacy solution where I have, for example, the retail database. I have also the, uh, yeah, this is a mess. I did, I, I'm, yeah, this is a mess, but it's my fault. So I have the retail database. I have connectors, which are listening to changes. I have Elasticsearch running here. I have UIs written in Angular. I have as well something to help me show you the what's going on inside the topics that is called calf drop. I got in a, this is too complex. Don't worry. You're going to understand this in a second. This is what I need you to see. This is running on one open one OpenShift instance. So remember I told you one of the things we would enable by adopting change data capture for example and modern cloud native solutions is that you could decide your deployment model. You can decide if you're going to be on-premise, fully on the cloud, hybrid, multi, hybrid multi, hybrid multi-cloud. Sounds fancy. Yeah, you can do that as well. So in order to decide, in order to do that, I am going to do the following. People on my team, they don't know Kafka. They're really good at coding, but not so good at Kafka. So in order to solve this problem, I'm going to leverage platform as a service. I'm going to leverage Kafka that is going to be managed by someone else. What does it mean? I can't, I can't bootstrap a Kafka broker. Yeah, you can, but can you, can you configure the cluster? Can you configure the backup? Can you know how many channels you need? How can you replicate the topic data in order to make sure it's going to be there when you need it? Maybe you know, but you don't know enough. So in order to get, the, get to where you want to be in the time you have, maybe sometimes we need to delegate a little bit. When we delegate, we start adopting cloud services. So in order to show you cloud service that in this architecture, I could have deployed Kafka here, but mm, no, nah, I'm going to use a managed service. What is a managed service? Red Hat has some options of managed service for us. Karina, is it a SaaS? No, this is not Gmail. This is not Gmail. A SaaS is a software that is ready for you to consume. You don't need to code anything. This is a platform for developers. So you will find API management. You will find Kafka as a service. You will find API designers. You will find service registry, data science solutions. So we have some in increasing. With this, I have configured, oh, and we have connectors. This is new as well. I should up upgrade my demo to use connectors here. So one of the services that I have created yesterday was a Kafka instance. OK, Kafka instance. Karina, is it hard to create? No, you can just go to red.red.ht slash try Kafka. And then you will end up in a page where you do some simple registration. The internet is not collaborating that well. You do a simple registration. No credit card needed. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. So no credit card needed. It's pretty simple, pretty quick. You can bootstrap a Kafka instance for you to try it out, see how it works. Once you create your Kafka, you will get your address so you can connect to the broker. And then if you want to create the topics, you can just come in here or you can use the CLI as I did because automation for the win. So if it is your first time using it, you can just come in here and you can create the topics manually using the web UI. Once you do that, you will be able to also configure the permissions for each topic, which consumer groups can create topics or not, can consume events or produce events. All of these are configurable here. I've done it. Uh, you can do it as well in the end if you want. So here, I have these weird topics. What are these weird topics? And did you type this out? This is the Bizium making its magic, showing me some changes that are going on on my legacy database. So let me rush. Otherwise, we won't have the time I want to show you other stuff. Fun, OK. So I'm going to show you two demos. The first one is this one, where I'm going to show you really deep down details, I'm going to enter Postgres, I'm going to do a change, and I'm going to show you the Kafka event showing up on the cloud for me at Red Hat. There, these topics, I'm going to show you the event going out there. And then I'm going to show you the final UI. I told you I'm not good at UIs. Please bear with me. So I'm going to show you in the UI the changes being reflected, OK? Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. So first thing, when you have a pod running, you can connect to it. I'm going to do all on, on the terminal. It's easier for me. So when you have a pod running, yeah, I like terminal. It's OK. Just want to explain something to you. Perfect. If you have a pod and you want to connect to it, you can just use the name. You do not have to, to put all this code here. So if I put, for example, um, OC, RSH, and I want to access my retail DB, I put the name of the deployment. If we check the deployment, it is the thing, it is a resource in OpenShift that actually takes care of the pods inside it, has all the configurations, and if you change something here, it reflects everywhere. So I'm explaining in a really high level, so you can just uh, follow me. So uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to SSH, just like I'm SSHing into that pod, and then after the internet helps me, I'm going to be able to actually connect to Postgres. I should have, have taken this into consideration, right? This Sloan is on the Wi-Fi. OK, so I'm going to connect to Postgres. Opa. OK. Opa in Portuguese means oops. Thank you, Otavio. So yeah, let's connect to Postgres. And then we can just connect. Hmm. We can connect to the retail database. Opa. <laughs> After this talk, you are going to be saying Opa with me. Uh, connect to the database. Perfect. So now the next thing, yeah, I'm looking at my sheet sheet because I'm not just a bit nervous. Just a bit. Uh, let's see. I have a table called products. So remember, I have this legacy system that is being used for many years now. This is the legacy database they have. Simple database, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be OK for us to see these changes. So this is what I'm going to do now. This store, they actually sell plants. Karina, plants? Yes. I had a lot of data on the web, mock data about plants. So it sells plants, a lot of plants. So I'm going to show you. All my data is kind of is indexed now here. So if I put that I want a yellow flower, I am doing a search on all my fields inside Elastic Index, showing all the names that might have yellow or the description that might have yellow. All right, what if I search for golden? Do I have anything here? Well, I do have. I do have. Nice. What I go a search for? What if I search for golden? 
leaf and I actually found an existing stuff. Golden leaf, cactus. Cactus. Okay, where is that? It's still there. Let's see. All right, I know. We can search for Java. A coffee bean. Perfect. So we are going to see the change being done in the legacy database. Alina, who's the CTO, remember the CTO? She just went there and she decided to sell Java on her store because now she has a performance search index to show everything to customers. Perfor I said performant. I didn't say beautiful. Mm. So with this, we will have the... All right, I have Java, I don't see anything. So this is what I'll do. We can just insert Java. Let me put it here because it's going to be easier. So I have, okay, ta -da 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 -da. okay. We are just going to insert. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I inserted it without the name. It's not a problem. We can insert another one. So not cactus, actually. I want to do Java. Okay. Java. I have some delay when, I type, uh, when I'm typing because remember, I'm inside a pod running in OpenShift, okay, at Amazon. So here, I am going to insert Java, but I already have this ID, so I'm going to change the ID. I'm going to put one, two, three, four. I'm very creative. Our species are very rare, and it's grown in Raleigh. Okay. I forgot to connect here for us to see the actual event, but I can show you going out here on the Kafka, on the Kafka drop. We see now a list of the topics. I'm going to look for the retail updates public product, which means I'm updating the product table inside the public schema. Once I open it, I'll be able to see the messages. Karina, is this how you do in production? Of course not. This is just for the demo, guys. This is going to be, this is being consumed by the microservices, microservice that is inserting the data inside the Elasticsearch. Perfect. So let me add an uh, offset here. And we should be able to see Java. There we go. What do we have in here? Let's take a look. What, this, what does this event tell me? It tell me what I had before. Nothing. You didn't have Java. That's why our visionary CTO asks us to put it there. So then we got Java, the data that we had before, the data that we are getting after. Where is it coming from? So if you want to join data from several places, you can process all the streaming using event streaming processing. Aggregation, filtering, there's a lot of stuff you can do there automatically to get this data and turn it to something meaningf meaningful. And it also tells us the operation that is going on. So if I'm creating something, if I'm deleting something, perfect. If I update it, it's going to be the same stuff going to show me the update. I'm thinking if I should just spend time on this. Yeah, I think I will real quick. One, two, three, four, I'm just going to show you here. Okay, Not Java, it's Jakarta now. So I'm changing here to Jakarta. Look, I'm just going to paste it. I think this is big enough now. So I updated. And if we Look at cough drop. Let me view the messages again. And we have 1006. And the latest change is here. We have Jakarta. And we have it saying that it's an update. Amazing. So what else? What else? What else, Karina? What else, Karina? You're running out of time. What do you have to show me? So this is what I have to show you. Make it, I need to make sure you're still with me. So perfect. We just we have just seen how we just plugged a connector into the database and allowed a new functionality to exist without even knowing what is happening on the legacy service. So with that, we have another thing. 
It's a little bit more complex. Karina do céu. Heavenly God, oh my gosh, Karina, why are you doing this to me? There's too many boxes for 10 minutes. Kinda, still very interesting. You will see that. The other functionality, functionality that was asked was for us to be able to give the customer a cash back. Whenever you buy something, we register on the legacy. The cashier, they are typing that like crazy. Everything you're buying, but on your receipt. Everything you buy has a price, and then everything is part of a, a sale. But in order to know how much is your cash back, it doesn't matter to this customer how much you spent buying Trident and buying, I don't know, a pencil in the same time. It just matters the total amount. So what we can do is first, listen, listen the changes on the database. I like to know everything that is happening. So we add the Bizium. Good. Next, we send it to Kafka. But that's not enough, as I told you. Every change is going to be an event. I don't want to know every single change on that, on that database, like every line item, a pencil, and this, and this, and that. It doesn't matter for my cashback service. So I can narrow down the whole scope, process that event, streaming, calculate it, and then just do what I have to do with the total amount and say, all right, Elias has just won 50 cents of cash back on his software, on his, not on the software, on his new uh, purchase. So how can I do that? Uh, 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 how can I do that? That's awesome. We have now, now I'm going to do this because it's going to be easier for us to visualize. So let me consume. Let me see what I'm going to consume. I'm going to consume the sale. Right here, I'm using a CLI just to make things easier for me to listen to the events inside my managed Kafka. Remember, database is in one place. My application is one place. Kafka is there another place. It's managed by Red Hat. I don't care about it. All I want is to use it. So here, I'm connecting there. I'm going to listen to the sales topic, and I am going to listen to what else? Sales aggregated. Remember, we are going to narrow down the scope. Doesn't matter each item of the purchase, just the total amount to calculate the cashback. All right. I am already listening here. Perfect. Let me put this to the side. This UI is just, just a little bit better. A little bit. Even has JavaScript. Look. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew. Right? We are back-end developers. We are proud of this ugly stuff that we do. So here, we have customers where I have automatically generated some purchases for them. So for example, I have... Zion Joseph, and Zion, had, he's a gold customer. Karina, how is he gold? You can, for example, use auto business rules automation in a microservice to actually calculate all those events and push this to the database if you want. I'm not doing that here yet, not for today. But we can calculate this depending on the amount of money this person has spent, whatever business rules that is. We can also use, uh, and, and then we show the total cashback. And the total cashback depends on each purchase. This is the sum of all the items. On the original database, each thing is a single line and it's very hard to process if you're doing that manually or if you decide to code everything because you think you're the best, and then you go and you choose the best error-prone solution ever. You don't want to go that, down that path. We have big vendors, big software companies, open, creating open source solutions that can do all the processing for you. It's all solved. You can just use it. So here, I am going to simulate, for example, we have the, I left, Casey, poor Casey, without anything just to show you. So her ID is 1,000. 
and I'm gonna try it out. This is just another microservice that is gonna insert things in the database to simulate our legacy application. The cashier registering stuff, right? So customer thousand, I think it's a thousand. It is a thousand. Let me just confirm the offset we have here as well on calf drop in case internet stops working and we don't listen there. So I'm gonna have here this and the aggregated. Okay, we have an offset of 163 events on each. So let me generate this and execute. And I hope it works. So far, everything has been going well. Mm -hmm. Internal server error. Thank you very much, Mr. Service. Let me update this just to see. Let's see what's going on. Karina, how would you debug this if you were to debug it? I would open the logs in the pod that is running this service. Okay, let me see here. Maybe I had a typo. Okay. A thousand and one, is it? Let me see. No, it's a thousand, but I can try a thousand and one. Let's see. It's also okay if it doesn't work. I will show you the, the previous messages. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, something's going on here. I don't wanna check that right now because I only have four minutes. So I'm gonna show you the one that I tested right before coming, but you know the demo gods, how they are, right? So this is what happened. Once we purchase something new, wait, everything is registered using CDC. So I have here just saying, hey, Mr. Customer, this ID did this purchase. Karina, I don't see the data of the purchase. Do you really want to be sending every single data through your network? Is that what you want to do? Do you, you want to get the network people crazy because you're consuming everything, putting all the events in your, in your event, in all the data in your events? No, it's in the database. So I'm just sending the ID, it's going to query. Who's going to query? Well, the service that is actually going to do the processing of this and the aggregation. So once it does the processing, it's, proce it's posting the actual results here on this topic. So it's saying, hey, for this sale, this customer on this date and time got this amount of, spent this amount of money. Karina, my gosh, you showed a lot of boxes there. Why is there a lot of boxes? Welcome to the microservices life. That's how it goes. If you want to work with microservices well, you get a better, you better get used to it. That's what you're gonna deal with. All of this stuff, they are choreographed. They are dancing. They are reacting to the events and posting the results via other events. So once you do all of this, that in it sounds complicated. Wow, might sound a little bit complicated, you know what? Because it's not your use case. But what you should understand is, if you have a scenario where you have a legacy application that is hard to change the code, or even you can't, or you don't want to, or even a scenario where you, you can change the code, but you need to prioritize something else. CDC might be the solution. What is CDC again? Change data capture. That is an enterprise data integration pattern that you can just listen to data, stream them as events, do whatever you want. Karina, I don't know Kafka. I've just shown you. Cloud services for the win. You don't need to do everything in your own server, in your own environment. Just delegate a little bit of it. Once you delegate, you can deliver the, the solutions that you need, okay? So that was my demonstration. If you want to run the demo, I told you, you should be able to do that. Well, it's beautiful. 
I'm already leaving, Mr. Manager. Mr. Manager. Every single word, not the best pronunciation, that I have said today is written down in this documentation that I have written everything for you about the scenario, about the architecture, about the anti-patterns. Not only that, you can even reproduce the same demo I have just run and look at all the details in depth. Karina, I wanted to see more about that. Kafka. Go there, look at it. Do whatever you want. How do, I, how do I do that, Karina? Well, if you're not able to just read the guides, there's even videos for you to do that, all right? So how do you install it? What is each use case that I have shown here? Copy, paste, copy, paste. I'm sorry, I don't have the guide for Windows users. Pull requests are welcome. Thank you very much. I'm Karina Varela. <laughs>